Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. I am Hashem Ali Khan. Previous videos I have completed the retirement benefits like a gratuity, commuted pension, leave encashment. I have explained all the provisions of Income Tax Act 1961 regarding these gratuity, commuted pension, etc. We have done so many problems also. Now I am resuming the discussion on Income Tax Act. Now the next topic is regarding the deductions from salary. Income Tax Act has given the procedure of how to compute the income from salary. First of all, four subheads are there. Salary, allowances, perquisites, profit in lieu of salary. The total of these four subhead is called gross income from salary. From gross income from salary, deductions are allowed under section 16. That's what I'm going to explain you. Only after knowing all these provisions, then if we go to solve the final problems on income from salary, you don't find any difficulty. So these videos are very, very important. So before proceeding, take the screenshot of the points which I have written on the board, then I'll explain every point in detail. Now, see, deductions from GTF, from deductions from salary. While computing income from salary, the following three deductions are allowed. Income Tax Act has given three deductions from gross income from salary. The first is standard deduction under section 16.1a. Then entertainment allowance deduction under section 16.2. And professional tax or employment tax under section 16.3. Only three deductions. Now we'll, uh, I'll explain you regarding each deduction in detail. Standard deduction under section 16, 1A. This deduction is compulsory for every person who is having income from salary. So every person, whoever, whoever is having income from salary, they will get this statutory deduction. Standard action is allowed to meet the various expenses that employee has to meet while in employment. So normally Income Tax Act says any expenditure incurred to earn the income, that expenditure will be allowed as deduction. But here the employee will also spend some expenditure like on the travel, uh, travel from going from home to the office, coming back from office to home. Apart from that, sometimes stationary he has to purchase some medical expenses. All these are incidental expenses relating to employment. So Income Tax Act says one common deduction we will give for meeting all expenses relating to employment. That common deduction is called standard deduction and every employee will get standard deduction. It is allowed as deduction even if it has not actually incurred any expenditure. It is not related to expenditure but common deduction given. Income Tax Act will not see how much expenditure you have incurred. Whether you have incurred expenditure or not, irrelevant. Only directly standard deduction, common deduction will be given. Now since standard deduction is a compulsory one, the same is known as statutory deduction. Sometimes it is called standard deduction, sometimes it is called statutory deduction. Because it is compulsory given by law. The deduction is least of the following two amounts. <clears throat> How much deduction? Income Tax Act has given the provisions regarding the amount of standard action least of the following two amounts gross income from salary or fixed ceiling of rupees 50,000 whichever is lower suppose the gross income from salary is 40,000 whereas ceiling amount is 50,000 whichever is lower 40,000 is lower so 40,000 will be allowed as deduction suppose if the gross income from salary is 5 lakh but deduction ceiling limit is 50,000 Whichever is less, 5 lakh or 50,000. 50,000 is less. So least among these two, gross income from salary or fixed amount of 50,000. This is the standard deduction. The next deduction is entertainment allowance deduction. This year deduction will be allowed only for government employees. And government employee means the employees of central government or employees of state government. It does not include the employees of statutory corporation or local authorities. 
or non government employees so this provisions entertainment allowance deduction is allowed only for central government employees and state government employees so non government employees they will not get this ea deduction that point you have to remember and entertainment allowance deduction will be least of the following three amounts 20% of salary actual ea received or fixed amount of 5000 this 5000 is a ceiling amount given by income tax act so among these three whichever is the least amount that will be allowed as deduction and here salary means only basic nothing else no allowances nothing only basic now professional tax professional tax or employment tax if an employee paid professional tax or employment tax during the previous year then deduction under section 16 3 will be allowed if the amount is due but not paid no deduction is allowed only on payment it will be allowed now format of computation of income from salary what is the specific format how to compute the income from salary when well, format is given but this format is this format is only an illustrative one given is an illustrative format that means apart from this many other items may come under the computation now format is computation of mr dash income from salary for the assessment year dash now two columns first head salary for computing income from salary all the subheads are four salary allowances perquisites profit in lieu of salary so first what are the items that may come under the head salary basic plus bonus plus fees plus commission plus employers contribution to rpf in excess of 12 percent of salary in the next video i'm going to explain you about this rpf right now time being remember employers contribution to rpf in excess of 12 percent of salary and then excess of interest on rpf uh, over exempted rate of 9.5 percent so income tax act has given that interest at the rate of 9.5 up to 9.5 percent interest is exempted if the interest is credited more than 9.5 the excess will be taxable. Lastly, contribution made by the employer to employ under new pension scheme. So these are some of the items which may come under subhead salary. Now allowances. There are many type of allowances like dearness allowance, dearness pay, city compensatory allowance, house rent allowance, unexempted amount. In working note, we have to calculate how much is exempted. The unexempted amount will be taken under allowances. Similarly, entertainment allowance. Apart from that, many other allowance like children education allowance, unexempted, hostel allowance, unexempted. Like this, many type of allowances, lunch allowance, medical allowance, all these allowances will come under allowances. Now, perquisites. Perquisites are the non-monetary benefits given by the employer or to the employees or their family members. So example of perquisite first one, rent free accommodation. Already in the previous videos, I've explained all the perquisites. So rent free accommodation, insurance premium on the policy of the employee paid by the employer. Similarly, provision of domestic servants. Sometimes the employer will provide domestic servant to the employee. The servant is giving the service to employee, but the salary is paid by the employer. That is called perquisite. Apart from that, motor vehicle will be there and interest-free loans are there, transfer of mobile uh, property to the employee. All these are the perquisites which will be taken under perquisites. Profit in lieu of salary. Compensation paid by the employer to employee on termination or modification of service or amount transferred from URPF to RPF. These are few examples. Normally, we don't find any item that will come under Profit. For the sake of formality, I am explaining these two items will come under profit in lieu of salary. Now take the total of all the amounts, salary, allowance, perquisites, profit in lieu of salary. The total is called gross income from salary. From gross income from salary, three deductions are available. Out of three, one is compulsory for every employee, for every employee. That is standard deduction under section 16 1A. Second, EA deduction, entertainment allowance deduction. This EA deduction is available only for government employees. 
for non-government employees or employees working in statutory organizations or local bodies, they are not eligible. Only central and state government employees, they will get deduction. Professional tax or employment tax, if paid by the SSC during the previous year, then deduction will be allowed under section 16.3. So these three deductions take the total in the outer column, deduct from gross income from salary, deduct the deductions. Then the remaining amount is called income from salary. That's all. So in this video, I have explained you about the deductions from gross income from salary and the format of computing the income from salary. Inshallah, in the next video, I'll explain you about provident fund. What are the different types of provident fund? And what are the provisions regarding taxability of that provision, uh, provided fund, inshallah. So if you are satisfied, give a like to the video, share my channel, subscribe my channel if you have not yet subscribed. And by the super thanks which is given below my video, inshallah will continue in the next.